Okay, so here we're going to look at how to load 35mm film into the cameras. And just to show you from what I explained before, at the college we've got two cameras which are very similar in how to load. So I'm only going to load the one, but the two apply the same. So this is the Pentax K1000. If I open the back of it up here first, you'll see that you have an empty part where you put your film cassette in. Stretches over the shutter at the back, and then on this side, you will see that you have a plastic uh, take up spool here that's got some little sprockets inside it. So that camera is very similar to the Vivitar 3800N. Um, so it's a different camera, but the loading is the same. So if I was to open this one up, you'll see empty side for the cassette there goes over the shutter and then there's the exact same take up spool in the side with a little bracket. So the two methods that I'm going to do for these two cameras are this pretty much the same. Looking at the K1000 and how we load these, you're going to take this camera and look at the back of it. On the top you have got your film rewind, you have got shutter speed dial, shutter release and the film wind on. And to get this film inside the camera you're gonna take the film advance, lift it up one and without holding the back which is another common mistake that students can make where they're lifting this up one and it won't open. As long as you're not holding the back down you're gonna lift the top notch up, it's gonna pop the back and you'll be able to open the back of your camera. You'll see you've got the empty part for the film there. It feeds over into the film take-up spool. So to take, take our film, today we're going to be using Ilford HP5 Plus. You open it up, take the film, it'll come in a pot. Either from the college you'll get a bought film or you'll have your own film or we'll do a hand-loaded film which looks a little bit different. It's still the same Ilford film just in a hand-loaded cassette. But this one here is a bought film. And how you've got to load it is, you see there's a top little bit of the film canister here, which is raised up. This bit always faces down in the camera. So we're going to place that in, facing down. And then with this bit that we pulled out first, push it down. And that has locked our film in place. What we're going to do next is take this bit here, which is called a film leader, pull a little bit out, and then where this little notch is in here, the little slit in the take-up spool, we're going to tuck that in. It goes in, and then using the shutter on the top, we're going to shoot once and wind it on. And you'll see the film will go a little bit tight on the back of the camera. Now some people will say this is quite wasteful but I would rather get shots on my film um, than have to go out and reshoot it. So it almost cost me a frame but what I like to do is make sure that this film is wrapped around the spiral once I've got a good grip on the film. So I'm going to shoot it once more, wind on again and you'll see that that what was the black plastic spiral had now has a full wrap of film all the way around it. Once you're at that point, your film has made a good connection. There's some little teeth just past the film load where you'll be able to look, check that these little teeth are aligned with the holes in the film and that'll give you a good grip. And once you're done there, it's a case of folding up, clicking it down, and then you can shoot and wind on Till your frame advance gets to zero and that is you're ready to go off and load and shoot this film and remember that that camera the k1000 and the vivitar 3800n both load in very much the same way so you'll use this method for both those types of cameras that we have at the college happy shooting Okay, so next up we have our P1000 
Pentax P30 camera. Now this one is a little bit different from the other two types of camera that we've got over to college in how you load it and I'm going to show you that now. Very similar to the other cameras, you still flip it over to the back. On the top you have shutter dial, you've got your film advance, you've got your film rewind crank. With these cameras what you have to make sure you do here, which is again another very common fault that students starting out make with these cameras, is on this side you have a power button. At the moment you see a little black notch. You want to make sure this camera is turned on. So what we're going to do is just click that up and you'll see a little tiny red notch appears. That's letting you know the camera's turned on so you'll be able to fire the shutter and wind on. Most common problem people have with these cameras is they the battery's flat or if it's turned off and they'll be I can't wind on, I can't shoot, if it's turned on you can shoot, you can wind on. So that's one of the most important ones with this camera. So to get in to this camera, same as the last one, we're going to open out the film rewind arm, raise it up once, pull it again and it's going to pop the back open. Now this one's a little bit different in the fact that it still has an area to put the film in. We're still going to stretch it over, but here we don't have though that slot to tuck the film in for it to take up. And this one feeds itself. On the back we have this little device here, which is used to put some pressure on the back of the film and roll it to stop it from coming loose. And we also have this slightly more raised up plate on the back which helps keep that film in place. So what we're going to do with this film camera, again, take the pot of film that you've been given, open it up, and we've got some HP5 again. So, sticking out a bit of the top film of the film canister, flip it so it's facing down at the bottom of the camera, pop it in, push the top notch down, to lock your film in place and then with your film leader and being very careful with all cameras that we don't touch the shutter because we don't want to damage the actual film camera shutter stretch that film leader out and we're going to tuck it just the other side of this little rubber notch place it over there pull enough of the film out so on the little sprockets that we've got at the top that you can see just there and at the bottom these holes in the film sit nicely into those and then once you're ready you'll see it's still quite slack here but we've got nothing to tuck it into we're going to close the back make sure it locks down and then on our frame release up here I'll bring it up and just focus in the camera a little bit more for us you'll see you've got an S, which is at the start, we're going to shoot this camera and you're going to keep winding it until you get to the zero. And the zero is what you want to let you know that you're ready to start shooting. And then this camera is ready to shoot, you can go off, shoot all you want, and once you're happy with it and you've finished your film, you will turn it off lock it off and bring it back. Okay, so once you've been out and you've shot your film, you'll be ready to start rewinding it. And the rewind of the film is something that sometimes can go wrong. So we're doing a quick little demo here of how to get the film out of the camera to avoid any problems. So starting off with the P30, you finish your shoot, what we need to then do is come back and we're going to turn the camera off. Now the thing with nearly all film cameras that you need to be aware of is when you come to rewind the film you're going to open the rewind arm and then on the film rewind arm, sometimes it's on the actual bit of plastic, sometimes on the arm itself, there's always going to be a little arrow, some directional arrow which is going to tell you which way you've got to rewind the film. But before you start rewinding it, the bit that people miss out quite a lot and it can cause you no end of problems if you don't do it, 
is you have to spin the camera upside down. Now on the bottom of cameras here, for example this one, we've got somewhere where the batteries go, the hole where you attach the tripod, and there's a little tiny button with a little R carved on it. This is the rewind button. It acts as like, it unlocks the film so you can rewind it. What you need to do when you want to rewind your film when you finish your shoot, make sure you press that button in, and it will click down, and then when you turn the film, you follow the arrow and you're going to rewind it and it will start off to feel like they've got a bit of resistance in the film and as you're rewinding it and rewinding it the film will suddenly go very loose once you feel it go loose that means the film is done and you can open it out and there's a bit of a knack to it you can either keep rewinding until it all goes completely loose and the whole film's gone back inside the cassette or you can rewind if you listen to a click you can just catch it with a little bit of the film leader hanging out and that sometimes can help you and make it a little bit easier when you come to process the film yourself in the processing rooms. So looking at our arrow, it's telling me I've got to wind this way. So take the rewind wheel, rewind it, keep rewinding, you can hear it. Sometimes a bit disheartening, we're hearing the crunching. But rewind it. It's gone loose. So I would open the film canister up, pop it up, and there is the film. And in this case, it's rewound in the pot and it's ready to be taken to go and process. And then we can take it off to the processing room, go and get it processed, and it's all done. Close the film camera up, and that camera, and that film is ready to be processed in the processing room. Okay, so this time with the K1000, and again the same applies to the V3800s. You've gone out, you've finished shooting with this film camera. This one you haven't got to worry about turning off, but same rules apply as before. So on the top of the camera you can see there's a little directional arrow telling us to go around this way. And that's your rewind arm, we're going to open that up. Same as before. Flip the camera upside down, look along the bottom, we have the battery port, the tripod mount, there's the button that we need to press to unlock the film. So we're going to push it in until it clicks down. And then following the rewind arm, we're going to rewind it, and this time I'm going to rewind it. Listen out for the click and try and take the film out so there's a little bit of the film leader left. So rewind it. So there, I just heard that little click. Very silent when you're actually doing it yourself and not listening through a microphone, you'll hear that click. So that will mean I can now open the back of the film camera and you'll see I've managed to keep that film leader left on there. That will help me when we come to the dark room or the processing room, close the back of that film camera up and that is finished and ready to shoot. Having that little lead will mean I've got some I can pull out when I take it onto the loading spiral, which again we'll show you in a future video when you come to process the film yourself. The button on the bottom that we've pressed on all the cameras to rewind it is really important because if you don't press it up and you just hope, turn this and start rewinding, the risk is that the film spiral, like the take up spool over here, stays locked. So as you're turning it, you run the risk of ripping the film in the camera. Now if that happens and you suddenly open the back of your camera and then your film's all wrapped around this spiral still, you're going to fog that film because you forgot to press the button and it hasn't rewound in. Now it's not the end of the world if you forget to press that, everyone makes mistakes and that's understandable, um, but if you forget to press that and you start turning the spiral and you hear that ripping crunching sound, you think, oh god, I've ripped the film in the spiral. Keep the film in the camera, come back to the college, go into your processing room or any room that you can black out. And then all you've got to do is rather than rewind it, if it's ripped, you'll have to take up and open the back of the camera. And then your canister can come out because the film's ripped out of it. All of your film is over here. 
So what we do is we take the film and we pull it and this will spin and we pull the film out of the camera in total darkness so it coils upon itself and then you can put the film, the raw film, into this light tight pot, seal it and then you can bring that to college to open up in the processing room to process the film out. It's not ideal but it happens, everyone makes mistakes, if that's what happens that's your kind of help that you can do with that. But that is all of our film all nicely loaded up. We've looked at how to use some of the cameras that we've got here at the college and how to load and unload their film. The next part comes at the time when we're going to look at processing this film to see what we've got on our negatives.